Hello and welcome everybody to our today's webinar with the very exciting topic. I have the honor to present to you the new product called Fronius Verto. It's a new inverter in our portfolio for small commercial systems. And today I want to show you a little bit more about its technical features. Now, my name is Chris. I'm guiding you through the next 20, 25 minutes of webinar content. And beside me is also my colleague, Max. He's behind the camera and answering your questions. So if you have any questions, send them through, use the chat feature. We try to answer them during the webinar and also after the session live. Now, this webinar is also being recorded. So if you find yourself missing a, a, a few slides, a little bit of content, you can rewatch it afterwards. We will send it to you tomorrow after, uh, after we have um, cut today's event. Then you can rewatch it as many times as you want. All right, but let's check the agenda first. We want to talk about product and features. So I will give you a quick overview on that. The system design, of course, as well, plays a major role with this product. And as we can see later on, it's very easy. It's very flexible. Data communication, just want to give you a quick glimpse how it looks like. And in comparison also to the Chen24 inverter and to the Tao. Then a quick look into installation and commissioning, just a brief overview. And last but not least, service and also warranty. Now, for more details, please keep in mind, we also are preparing currently an online training with an hour of content. So there is a little bit more in there than in this webinar. This is really just for uh, an overview on this product. Now, speaking of overview, which power classes do we have now for the Fronius Verto? Now, this new inverter will arrive in the market for three different grid types. The first one is the, the, the general European standard, I would say, for 400 volt systems in the power classes from 25, 27, 30, and 33.3 kilowatt. The second grid type is for 480 volt systems. And here we only have one um, um, output number of 36 kilowatt. And then there's also a 208 to 240 volt for Latin America, for example, with 15 and 18 kilowatt. So keep that in mind, the housing, the actual inverter looks the same for all of these grid types. We only talk about different output data. All right, what makes the Fronius Verto really special is an increased number of MPP trackers. So for this inverter, we talk about four individually working MPP trackers. And per MPP tracker, we have two string inputs. So eight in total on this inverter. We have 28 amps of usable input current per string. So high current modules can be used without any problem on this inverter. Also 28 amps for maximum in, uh, uh, usable input current per MPP tracker. This value can be overdimensioned. To eight, uh, 28 is just a usable capacity. Then the maximum DC input voltage is at the limit of 1000 volts, just as on every other Fronius inverter currently. Usable MPP voltage range, very broad from 150 to 7, uh, 870 volts. So we can go down low to very short strings with eight, seven modules, depending on the module type and also can do long strings as well. 13 kilowatt is the maximum usable DC power per MPP tracker. So you can see this can really be oversized and the maximum PV generator output is 20 kilowatt per MPP tracker. Of course, as all of our other inverters as well, we have the dynamic peak manager on board, which is our word for a shading management. So if we have light to moderate shading, no problem for the Verto as well. And all of this is what we call super flex design. Now we come later on to a special slide where I want to talk about the design features as well. 
Now, one more topic that we can expect from the Verto is integrated SPDs as standard. You have AC and DC surge arresters as standard integrated, so no expensive retrofitting required, no external installation, no external box required, all on board. And you can decide when ordering if you want a type 1 plus 2 or a type 2. But keep in mind, both are integrated as standard, AC and DC, integrated off the shelf. When it comes to safety on the DC side, you can't be um, uh, thorough enough, and therefore we also equip the Verto with our Fronius Arc Guards. This is an AFCI logarithm, you could say, and it's already equipped with some other products of ours, such as the Snap Inverter, Simo Advanced, and the Taro in the direct version. Now, the Fronius Arc Guard is a precise detection, or gives you a precise detection of DC arcs. And this, um, with this feature, we would interrupt this arc and extinguish it. So it's really a high safety feature, equipped as standard, according to IEC standard certified, so very high safety. And I would argue we have the best resources to equip our inverters with such algorithm as we are working with arcs since 1950 in the business unit perfect welding. The only difference is there we want the arc to be steady and good and in the solar energy we don't want the arc so we know all the characteristics and have designed a very very good algorithm therefore fronius arc gut now i also want to to paint paint you a picture there the goal for fronius is of course to have the fronius arc gut equipped on every fronius inverter and this is slowly but steady going um, in the right direction and the next step would be, of course, the Fronius Verto. One more very interesting feature that the Verto will give you is asymmetric generation. So a standard Fronius inverter in a free phase system will produce um, phase exact, um, uh, not phase exact, uh, 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 a symmetric phase production. So if we have three kilowatt of production, we have one kilowatt per phase. Now with the new uh, inverter, we also have a new software version, and this will allow you to have an asymmetric generation ready to use if you need it. This is of course only relevant if you have phase exact energy measurement in your region, in your country, and therefore you can then supply however much energy is needed per phase with some limitations of course the limitations you can read in the in the bottom right corner meaning 25 amps is the maximum asymmetry that that we can deliver so from weakest to strongest phase 25 amps is the maximum however for regions such as romania hungary and other regions where phase exact measurement is necessary we now have a feature which allows you the best and cost-effective usage of your PV system. And please do not forget the bottom right sentence. Please always check with your grid supplier first if you can use this feature, if it's necessary, if it's possible. Very, very important. So yeah, asymmetric generation, this feature is also possible with the Fronius Verto. Now, when we talk about the product, we also need to talk about this cooling feature this uh, inverter um, has. And it's again, of course, the active cooling with all the other Fronius inverters, same. We have two internal and two external fans. And if you turn around the inverter, so from the backside looking on it, we have here the cooling channel sucking in cold air from top and from this space in between the inverter and we are blowing out the hot air at the side. And the internal fans are just for circulation, of course, and also keeping a cool temperature inside. Now, with this active cooling system, we allow, of course, high ambient temperatures. We'll come to that number later on. There it is, actually, already the technical data. 
It is a lot. Don't worry, I won't go through all of these numbers. If you're interested, you can make a picture, you can re-watch the recording and press pause, of course, and, and, and read through all of this. I want to pick out the most important ones for you. The most important one, in, in my opinion, is the oversizing. On the left-hand side, roughly in the middle, we read 150%. This is exactly what we offer with all the Adafronius inverters, meaning that with a 30 kilowatt inverter, you can operate a 45 kilowatt peak PV generator without any warranty issues. The next thing I want to mention is on the right side, the degree of protection we have with the Fronius Verto, again, a indoor and outdoor protected inverter with IP66. So, um, yeah, rain, snow, wind, absolutely no problem. The only thing you want to watch out for is direct sunlight, which is not good. We, of course, want to have a shaded place to install the inverter. The weight is around 44.75 kilogram, so two people are most likely necessary to lift it up and mount it. Yeah, ambient temperature, minus 40 to plus 60 degrees. As we have discussed, the active cooling technology is the reason why we can do that, why we can have such a broad in, uh, ambient temperature range. And yeah, all the rest of this uh, technical data, I uh, encourage you to read through at a later stage as I want to go through with the next slides now. Yeah, the next slide is about system design, as mentioned. And as you can imagine, with four MPP trackers, we have a very flexible inverter to install in, in difficult scenarios as well. So complex system design or shaded scenarios, different length of module of, of, of strings, no problem, thanks to four high current MPP trackers, a wide voltage range, remember 150 to 870 volts, the dynamic peak manager is on board as standard and activated and maximum installation flexibility because we have a very um, open installation area. We come to that point in a bit. Now, for example, the picture on the right hand side with a side, uh, a side building and also a PV generator on the roof and three different sizes on the main roof absolutely no problem with the Berto. And as always, I encourage you to check out our design tool called Fronius Solar Creator. It's free of charge, browser-based. You can directly check it out and log yourself in with your Fronius credentials and um, make use of uh, all the, the, the free of charge design possibilities. Now, keep in mind, the Berto will be equipped in the Creator with end of this month. All right, data communication. We have a lot of similarities on this one, but uh, first of all, let's start with data security. With Fronius, you have to guarantee to be sustainably safe. What do I mean with that? We have the uh, decision that the data locations for, for our servers, for our clouds, everything of this is based in Austria and on European clouds which gives, of course, a, a higher data security. So um, this is also ISO certified. Um, important to know that this, uh, this whole um, data security really means a lot for Fronius. We also separate customer data and system data. This is stored separately to prevent cyber attacks. And of course, every one of us of Fronius employees has regular cybercrime awareness trainings in order to keep our data safe, your data safe. So keep that in mind next time also when you decide which inverter you want to use. Now, coming to data communication, I mentioned we have a lot of similarities with other Fronius products, such as the Gen24 and the Taro. And this is by our data communication card, the Fronius Pilot. It is the same unit with the same connection possibilities also in the Verto. We have LAN, we have Wi-Fi connection, we have the LED status at the front of the inverter, we have two Modbus communications, 
for smart meter and the Ohmpilot, for example, a WSD feature is also equipped and the regular digital in and outputs. So all these features are the same. If you know the Gen24, you know the Verto as well. Very good to know. And as we have the same data communication, a solution like this is also possible. What I have here is active power reduction for mixed systems. This will be ready to use with um, uh, until summer we prepare you with a software update to work also for other inverters, um, the software version 1.31. And with this, it's possible to do the, a dynamic power control for mixed systems of up to 20 inverters. Now, if you haven't heard of this, it's very simple to explain. If you have a mixture of Fronio systems like Tauro, Verto, Chen, Snap Inverter even, <clears throat> you can have a dynamic power control um, by having one master inverter where you set the maximum feed-in limitation and the rest of the inverters, the other 19, will follow this protocol and reduce the output power accordingly. And as I mentioned, this is ready to use with the new software 1.31. Now, what we need for that is a, uh, a correct network setup. So every one of this inverter needs to be in the same uh, network system. And we need at least one from your smart meter at the feed-in point connected to this one master inverter, which sends out the control to the rest of the inverters. The communication is then done via Modbus TCP, so SunSpec protocol. And yeah, it allows you to have a mixed system, a bigger system, and still have the possibility to do a dynamic power control. All right. Now, uh, the next feature I want to, or the, the next step I want to really quickly go through, guide you through is the installation and commissioning because also here we see a lot of similarities, such as the quick locking screws. You remember from the Gen24, you just have to do a 180 degree turn with a Torx 20 screwdriver in order to open the hood and also the bottom cover. It is the same on the Verto. You have two screws for the bottom, uh, for, for the top cover. You can undo this, and then you have six screws at the bottom with quick lock screws, and then you are at the connection compartment of the inverter. So no cordless screwdriver needed. Very, very easy and fast to do. And if we are inside, we see a very um, tidy space. That's the first thing that you maybe recognize. It's very tidy and it's open spaced. So it's comfortable to install something in there. We, we have a, a high flexibility because Left of the AC SPD, you see a lot of space on the DIN rail, which is intentionally for you to use. So if you plan to integrate a, a LAN switch, a modem, a, whatever, a router, you can mount it inside here on the DIN rail. So extra space for you. Um, it's also for larger cable diameters to use. So on the far right hand side, we can see the AC terminals. And it's from four square millimeters up to 35 square, square millimeters that you connect AC cables onto. Um, the DC side, I haven't mentioned that before. We know we have two string inputs per MPP tracker and the string input exactly is a MC4 connector connected on the outside. So maybe you see it on the left bottom picture. We see eight of these MC4 plugs and this is where we directly plug in our strings. Very easy to do. And yes, we uh, rely on the real uh, manufacturer of MC4s from Stäubli, multi-contact. So this is the real MC4 manufacturer, and we also include these on our inverter. <clears throat> when it comes to commissioning, we again have strong similarities to our previous products. It's well-known process. If you know how to do the Chen24 or the Taro, you know how to do the Verto. It's one simple click on the sensory button in the middle in order to open the access point, or you can do 
directly a connection via LAN and then do their commissioning. The commissioning itself is easy to do via Solar Star app. Also, the Vert will, of course, be integrated there, or you can stick with a browser and do it there. So the actual process I won't go through now, today, in this webinar, but keep in mind the online training will follow in the next few weeks. Then you also see the commissioning there. But it is essentially the same as with a Chain24 product. Now we come to our last chapter, and it's about service and warranty. The service concept is also uh, kept very simple in order to make it um, simple for you, of course, in, out in the field. And what we offer you is here a simple pilot exchange or an inverted exchange. And in between, of course, you can exchange also the SPDs on AC and DC side, no problem. They can be exchanged on site. But essentially, I want to focus on pilot exchange and inverter. The reason why we haven't picked a print board exchange there is simply because it's too crowded in there to let you operate out in the field. And it's too risky that then the other print board also needs to be exchanged and you need to drive there two or three times in order to get the service done. We get rid of that completely by simply doing a full inverter exchange with the Verto. Now, in any case, if we have a pilot or an inverter exchange, please always remember we need to do a license exchange. It is, again, the same with a Gen24 product. If we exchange one of these uh, positions there, we need to activate DC and AC, reconnect with the web interface of the inverter, and start the license management. It's very important that the license numbers get re-registrated. If we do not do that step, the inverter will not run or run with a limit of a few hundred watts and that's it. So very, very important. Also for the Verto, if you do a service, do also the license management. When it comes to the warranty, it's very, very similar to the Tauro warranty because we are above 12.5 kilowatts and therefore we are in the same uh, power class range where we have the same warranty models. And the warranty models are as following. We have two years Fronius Warranty Plus as of installation date. So the first two years after installation means we have material cost, um, shipment cost, transport cost, and service cost all included. And if you register the product within the first two years, you can um, upgrade the, the warranty free of charge to plus five or plus three years. So it is free of charge, also the extension, but you have to do it with the pro product registration and within the first two years after installation date. And the additional five and the additional three are just a, a simple differentiation in the warranty models. So warranty model plus with the plus three years means um, in total five years of warranty plus with everything included, material, transport, service. Or you have two years warranty plus and then five years Fronius warranty, which is essentially just the material without the shipment costs. So, but then you have seven years in total. So you can decide between plus seven, uh, five or seven years in total. Only thing to do is do not forget for the product registration in the first two years. Yeah, and that's it for today's webinar already. Um, more information on this Verto product will follow, of course. We will have uh, newsletters, links, uh, data sheets, of course. I mentioned the online training will come soon. Keep an eye on it on uh, our homepage in order to register upfront for it if you are interested. And of course, with a new product, we also will have new how-to videos, how to do the setup, how to do the commissioning, the service, whatsoever. So, yeah, a lot of things are happening. If you are curious, we have a lot of new um, informations for you as well on the Intersolar coming up soon in the uh, next few weeks and months. So 
maybe we see each other there on stand. And if not, I would be happy to see you again on one of our next webinars or online trainings. Now, before we close today's session, let me quickly check the questions. I see, yeah, perfect. Max already mentioned there are some. We also answered a few of them. So uh, one question is about the startup volt voltage. Um, the startup voltage is actually actually also the usable MPP tracker voltage. So we say 150 volts is the minimum in order to start the production in early morning. Meaning with, as mentioned, six or seven modules, it is typically enough to, to have a Fronius Verto up and running. It is, of course, not the best efficiency, um, but it would work, no, no problem. Uh, the second question was about the asymmetric generation. Is it working correctly if we have a zero grid limitation? Um, yes, it is also working like that. So if you have zero feed in, it will work accordingly and will measure, okay, what's the consumption in my house per phase and only this phase correct consumption uh, or, or energy is then produced and delivered for uh, uh, from the Verto product. So it is working exactly the same also with a zero feed-in uh, policy if you have one. Um, um, one question about the network and the solar web integration. Um, the idea for multiple systems, like if you have a Verto, a Chen and a Taro, um, there is a different story to the, to the visualization on solar web and to the um, system power control that I mentioned. So for the monitoring, you still have to integrate every Fronius inverter um, to, to one system on solar web, you just add it as component, and then you have one system shown up with multiple inverters in it. So one summed up production will be shown to you. So this is how it works with the monitoring. And for the feed-in limitation I mentioned, you then have the uh, master inverter sending out protocols or signals to the slave inverters in order to regulate them. This is a, a, a different story there. I hope it's clear. Okay, um, so more questions are coming in. I would say we leave it for, for now with the live answering. I will now turn off microphone and camera and also uh, put myself in there and answer your questions in writing. So uh, keep at it, send them in. We try to answer all of them now. And yeah, last thing I want to say, thank you very much for joining. I hope it was interesting for you. I hope you can work as well with the Verto in the near future. And yeah, we see each other in the next webinar, online training or in Munich at the Intersolar. So have a nice day and till next time.